Aerial Cable Car. This is the chart showing the four different types of cable propelled transit systems. In this chapter video, we will focus on Aerial Cable Car, which is a subtype of ART. Only few Filipinos have experienced riding a cable car in the Philippines. There are touristic cable cars in Tagaytay City, Cavite, and another one in Lubok, Bohol. Both are crude installations. A modern cable car is installed in an exclusive and expensive residential complex in Tagaytay City. But only a few can experience such a ride because only members are allowed in the exclusive neighborhood. And the cable car is low speed and low capacity. With so few options for Filipinos to try ART, there is a severe lack of understanding about ART in the Philippines. Some Filipinos have tried cable cars in Hong Kong. It is a favorite overseas tourist destination, being more affordable and only a two-hour plane ride from the Philippines. Many Filipinos have seen on TV or movies cable cars. It is a means to transport skiers and their ski equipment up a mountain top for them to ski down the slopes. There are thousands of cable car installations around the world. Most of them are in ski resorts. Few Filipinos are aware that cable cars have been used in public transportation, much like jeepneys and buses in other parts of the world. Many Filipinos have seen on national TV of cable cars since 2016 being broadcasted as a means to solve traffic congestion in Philippine cities. But it is hard to appreciate the effectiveness of cable cars in very short video clips on national TV. Moreover, what they see are tiny cabins that move very slow compared to LRTs that they are familiar with. Without further explanation by government on how it works, few Filipinos know that urban cable cars are an effective mode of transport since they were installed in Medellin, Colombia in 2004. There is one major reason why the use of urban cable cars is not gaining acceptance in the Philippines despite its early use since 2004. The cities where they are installed, mostly in Latin America, are so far away from the Philippines. These are mostly in Spanish-speaking countries from Mexico in the north down to Argentina in the south. It is harder to appreciate the efficiency of an ART system by only watching TV and looking at YouTube videos or pictures. Whereas countries in Latin America are just neighbors with each other. When they see their neighbors succeed in providing mass transport to its urban residents through ART, they just copy it. For example, BRT started in Curitiba, Brazil in 1974. It became popular in Latin America. Then it spread all over the world. Just recently, ART started in Medellin, Colombia in 2004, or 30 years after BRT. It has increasingly become popular in Latin America. It is now spreading all over the world. Both ART and BRT serve medium capacity corridors. Thus, they can compete or complement each other by serving different medium capacity routes in cities around the world. Let us look at the history of the aerial cable car. When the steel cable was invented in 1834, transportation using cable systems increased. It was only used for material transport as it was not yet safe enough to carry human passengers. This is the earliest version of a circulating ski lift installed in 1908. There is no cabin yet in which passengers can ride. Instead, a passenger rides on a pair of skis and holds on a bar that is attached to a cable. The skier is dragged until he reaches the upper station, somewhere here. The skier releases the rod. He then skis downhill. The cable looping in the opposite direction will be empty going back to the lower station. This is the ski lift previously shown and this time plotted on this time scale. Other milestones are plotted to better see the progression of cable car technology over the years. The next milestone was the provision of a seven-seater cabin pulled and supported by three cables. 
It was then called a gondola because in the 1890s, a gondola referred to a cabin on an airship that was invented in 1852. The first mass-produced car, the Model T, was released in 1908. This new passenger cabin that is hung from a cable looks like a car. People would then start calling this the cable car. Today, many still use the word gondola to refer to a cable car. The next milestone is this two-seater cable car that uses only one cable that opened in 1949. While this cable car is a reduction from a seven-seater to a two-seater cabin, this was still a technological milestone because of the use of only one cable to support and pull the cabin. Using only one cable to carry and propel the cabin is simpler. It is cheaper to install, operate, and maintain. Because of this, it would become more popular than the other designs. A great majority of cable cars today use only one cable. This is a monocable ART installed in Disneyland from 1956 to 1994. This is the 1930 model installed in Schoensland, Germany that was previously plotted on the timescale. Amazingly, it still operates up to the present time. Europe is very rich in history. Europeans are very proud of its history that many building structures and machineries of historical significance are preserved as much as possible. This gondola is among those that is being preserved. Comparing a picture of the station in 1930 and that during the COVID pandemic made by a vlogger in 2021 shows that little has changed. The latest change in cabins was in 2012. It looks almost the same as the original, maintaining its classic look. In modern times, cabins with more than 10 passengers now look like this. Using more modern and efficient cabins for this system will destroy the historical value of the installation in Schoensland, Germany. It is likely that this ART will continue to operate in the coming decades, maintaining its original looks and system for historical and tourism purposes. It will also be a pride showcase for the engineering talents of the Germans in the field of transportation engineering, similar to the American-made cable liners in San Francisco. Even the original truss-type tower of the Schoensland cable car has been preserved. In modern times, tubular towers are being used. These photos show that an ART can last a long time if properly maintained. Let us look at the history of cable cars in Singapore and learn some lessons on why ART is such a viable mode of transport. The Singapore ART was installed in 1974, the first generation cabin now placed in a museum. It is a bi-cable ART. One cable supports the cabin, the other cable pulls the cabin. 20 years later, in 1994, the cabins would be replaced with a new model, still with six passengers. It would still be a bi-cable gondola, but this time the speed has been increased to double its passenger per hour capacity. The switch from the first gen to second gen took only 25 days to complete. 16 years later, in 2010, the system would change from a bi-cable to a mono-cable gondola, using only one cable to support and pull the eight-passenger cabin at the same time improves the efficiency of the ART. The cabin capacity would increase from six to eight passengers. The increase by two passengers would require a massive renovation. It would take 10 months to complete. It takes longer since the old machineries have to be dismantled and replaced with an entirely new system. There is a cable car museum located at the mountain station in Singapore mainland. Instead of throwing or recycling the old cabins, some are displayed in the museum. There is also a souvenir shop beside the museum where you can buy cable car souvenirs. The ART already earns money from ticket fares. It further earns money from the museum. In the museum gallery, a short animated history is shown. It goes from first, second, and third generation, which is the present generation. The next generation is simply just labeled coming soon because the latest model has not yet been installed in Singapore. The increase in capacity between the first and second generation is 100% in 20 years.
the increase in capacity between the second and third generation is 70% in 16 years. Currently, monocable ARTs can carry up to 4,500 passengers per hour. This is an incremental increase of 88%. Should the physical limit of a monocable ART be reached, a tri-cable gondola can be used along the same alignment. Another set of increases in capacity can be reached. This is an illustration of how easy it is to upgrade an ART system with little disruption and at minimal cost. There is no other mass transportation system that has achieved a large incremental increase in capacity over the years than ART. The good news is that there is still so much room for improvement. You can see positive results in the ongoing research and development in CPT technology. This will give investors, whether in public or private sectors, considerable confidence in the recovery of their investments at minimal risks. In 1972, a four-person capacity cabin was installed in Austria. Two years later, a six-person capacity was installed in Singapore. Seventeen years later, an eight-person capacity cabin was installed in Austria. Thirteen years later, in 2004, a ten-person monocable cabin was installed in Medellin, Colombia. This installation would be the birth of the urban ART. It was not only the capacity of the cabin that was crucial in making ART as a viable means of public transportation. It was also the continual improvement in speed and passenger per hour capacity. In 2010, a tri-cable ART was installed in Koblenz, Germany. Its cabin had a capacity of 35 passengers. Over the next 12 years, there have been many improvements in cabin features, cabin capacity, speed, and passenger per hour capacity. In 2021, the first 12-passenger cabin was installed by Leitner Poma in Medellin, Colombia. In the same year, in 2021, the latest model D-Line of Doppelmayr was installed in Talpexco, Mexico. Its installation is only 4,000 pph PD with a speed of 22 kph, but a D-Line model is capable of 4,500 pph PD and a speed of 25 kph. This is a photo of the latest 2021 model 12-passenger capacity cable car cabin of a monocable ART. It now has a bigger interior space. This would allow two standing passengers to be accommodated in this area. Grab bars are provided for standing passengers. Even if there will be a maximum of two passengers that will stand inside the cabin during peak hours, everyone would still be comfortable. This is unlike MRT and BRT during peak hours where passengers are packed like a can of sardines. In subways, there were major improvements in its early years, then it flattened in the last 95 years. This subway in Barcelona in 1924 has almost the same speed and capacity of the new Jakarta subway in 2019. In the case of cable cars, the pattern is the same up to 2004 when the first urban cable car was installed in Medellin. ART speed is not that important for skiers and mountain visitors. Speeding up will result in only 1 to 3 minutes in time savings. There are no peak hours in these resorts, the kind that we see in cities. Distances are short. The cost of improving the specs may not be enough to justify the benefits of speed and capacity of a touristic application. But when it was used for the first time as a mode of transport in a city in 2004, it would be clear that the capacities of the ART must be increased. The manufacturers responded as can be seen in this table. From 2004 to 2021, cabin capacity increased by 20%, speed increased by 39%, and passenger capacity increased by 60%. In the coming years, the improvements in speed, cabin capacity, and system capacity of monocables will approach its limits. It will likely be the tri-cables that will cover the further increase in speed, cabin capacity, and system capacity. Currently, tri-cables are much more expensive than monocables. With increasing demand and number of installations, prices are expected to go down as they will be cheaper to produce. 
Already, manufacturers such as Doublemeyer are preparing for this eventuality. This is a photo clip from a 2021 Doublemeyer promotional video on its concept tri cable ARTs. It is specifically designed to serve a central business district surrounded by high rise buildings. Current tri cables have a cabin capacity of 35 passengers with an average speed of 30 kph. These future tri cable systems are certain to have higher specs. At some point, like rail based transportation, the improvements may flatten. This is not a problem. ART is intended to serve a route of medium ridership and not of high ridership. There are already many systems that can cover the high ridership market, such as LRT, monorail, and subway. Both cable and rail-based transportation are efficient in their respective markets. They are not meant to compete with each other, but complement with each other. More details on future CPT systems will be covered in another chapter video. The future of ART and urban transportation is really very bright. These are photos of notable aerial cable cars. The photos of notable aerial cable cars will be limited in this chapter since so many photos of them will be shown and explained in other chapters. Aerial cable cars can have variants. Instead of passenger cabins being clamped to the cable, it will now be chairlifts. The mechanisms will be the same as the chairlift and the cabin are monocable ARTs. The only major difference will be the boarding and deboarding procedure. Instead of only passenger cabins, the ART system can be a combination of bike cabins and passenger cabins as in this case. The mountain bikers load their bikes in a bike cabin. Then, owners of the bikes ride in adjacent passenger cabins until they reach the mountaintop destination. The cabins going downwards will mostly be empty as the bikers will go down riding their bikes on a mountain trail. More variants will be shown in other chapters.